let's welcome, I think probably the hottest player on the hottest line in the National Hockey League right now. Great to welcome Gabriel Velarde back to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Gabe, uh, I think I know the answer to this, but uh, how are you doing these days? Doing good. Everything's uh, going well, and the team's uh, having a lot of success right now, and we just uh, we got to keep it going. Well, listen, we, right we really appreciate you jumping on right now. And, uh, you know, it's it's been so interesting to see, you know, you when we first chatted during training camp, obviously an unfortunate injury, and come back and just absolutely catch fire on this new line. I mean, uh, how, uh, how much more fun are you having today than you were maybe a couple weeks ago when you were grinding back from that injury and trying to get back in the lineup? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It sucks uh, dealing with any kind of major injury and uh obviously took some time even when i did come back a few games i felt where i was you know timing and conditioning was off um but now i think things are kind of clicking and obviously we're we're getting a lot of points but i think more importantly the team's playing really well as a as a whole and we're obviously having a lot of success um but it's still very early in the season we gotta keep it going so it's but it's it's been really fun you know what? I mean, we could go right to the line of what you guys are doing offensively, but I actually wanted to ask you about what you just mentioned, the team's success, and the way this group has been playing really all season at five-on-five. Five. Um, how would you describe the team's commitment to the defensive structure, and how is the success you guys are having maybe reinforcing the things that the coaching staff's trying to instill in the team uh, for 60 minutes every night? Yeah, I think you just said, I think the, the defensive zone structure that we have in place has been so solid and everyone's committed. And uh, I think, you know, when things kind of do break down, obviously we have the best goaltender in the world. And uh, it helps having that, obviously. But I think uh, our, our structure in place has been uh, very, uh, very helpful and very easy for me to learn coming from a, a different system in L.A. And uh I think uh, that's what's given us uh, the most success is our five-on-five five play because I think our, our special teams needs to improve still. There's a lot of work to be done there. But I think when you can fall back on that five-on-five five play that we've had, it's um, the reason for our success, obviously. You know, and I think it speaks to, you know, these wins and the way the team has come together and that, you know, people like us will spend a lot of time talking about the highlight reel goals and uh, like what your line's doing right now. But I mean, you look at a game like yesterday against the Detroit Red Wings, and everyone's got a piece of these. I mean, you got a fourth line that's going well. We know what Adam Lowry's line did early on. I mean, um, this is not a team that is just being carried by a few guys, even though you guys are having an incredible run of success right now up on line one. No, you said it. We're extremely deep. You look at our roster, it's, uh, Incredible guys can shuffle in and out. Guys that uh, are on third and fourth line could easily be on the first line uh, on different nights with injuries and, and stuff like that. Um, so I think uh, when you have such a deep roster, it's it's hard for other teams to just continue to roll lines. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing. As you're seeing, we're just continuously rolling and and bringing it to the other team kind of with our, our hard forecheck and our uh, aggressive style of play. So it's been uh, it's been fun to watch and be a part of. But it, and listen, it's been particularly fun to watch you along with Ehlers and Shifley since you've been put together, what, 10 points in four games. I mean, how would you describe the run that uh, you're on personally along with uh, Nick and Mark? Yeah, things have been uh, obviously going well so far. We're, we're scoring. Um, it's not going to be like that every night, obviously. Um, you got to stay patient with it and just keep grinding. And uh, when you're playing with two guys like that, for, for me, um, Two guys that are extremely smart and such a high hockey IQ out there. Um, it makes things very easy for me. And uh, we all kind of have different uh, different skill sets, I think, that kind of uh, complement each other. If you look at our styles of play. So I think that uh, also helps with, with our success. Um, but like I said, I mean, it, it, it's it, any given night. I mean, we're, we're producing right now. Things can change. We just need to continue... Uh, Playing aggressive, and then I think when you're playing aggressive and, and you're working hard, then your instincts kind of take over, and uh, I think that's what's been clicking so far, and we just got to keep uh, going. Uh, I mean, Jet fans are quite familiar with the the, uh, the offensive um, skills of Mark Shifley and certainly Nikolai Ehlers. What, what have you learned about those guys from playing with them and then being teammates with them for the last uh, couple months? Uh, I think with Shife, just how – 
incredibly smart and intelligent he is out there. Um, he notices every little thing and he'll tell you every little thing on, on what he's seeing and he'll listen to him and be like, Hey, uh, like, that's crazy that you noticed that, but that makes sense. You know, I'll, I'll look for that next time. Um, things like that and his puck protection and, and how deceptive he is with, uh, with his eyes, just kind of looking guys off. Um, and then I think with, with Ehlers, just very, uh, very fast and, uh, Similar to Shite, very deceptive, but in a different way. I think he does it more with his speed. Um, but just in, in, incredibly fun guys to play with, and it makes my job uh, real easy out there. So it's uh, it's been fun, fun so far. We've seen a, a lot of cool things from the three of you. Um, how about Ehlers last night with the uh, with the kick pass to you from the corner? I, did you know that he had that club in his bag? I mean, uh, uh, were you expecting the puck at that point? I, I, I mean, I was standing there, and I was just kind of uh, being a support option, and I saw he had it under his foot. I wasn't sure what he was going to do with it at first, but I, I kind of had a hunch he was going to do that because he kind of held it for like a second almost, and uh, it was just such a smart play by him. He shoulder-checked, saw me, and then he, he did that uh, kind of heel kick. And I, right away, like when I when I got the puck, I saw I knew Shife was there. I knew we were going to score, and I just pointed the the fly right away because I was like, "Oh, all you like without that play, we weren't scoring." Obviously, uh, it was pretty cool. It was a smart play. Well, there's been a few of those, and you know what? This sort of explosion for your line and and really a great stretch for the team kind of dates back to last Wednesday, which I know is a big game personally for you. Going back to LA, you guys were down two nothing in that game, and then your line broke out two goals from Ehlers. You ended up being on from being a part of all five goals. When you look back at that game, considering the opponent, how you came back against a team that doesn't give up leads very often. Um, how important was that win? And, and what do you remember about that game and how has it maybe helped you guys continue the, uh, the run you've been on this past week? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it was end of a road trip. We were coming off a tough loss in San Jose, a game that we obviously didn't want to lose. Um, but yeah, that night, I mean, we just kept kept coming. I think we had a, a bad first period, and like you said, they were up two nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a huge win for us. Uh, Ali's obviously one of the, the best top five teams in the league right now, and they're they're so good defensively, and they're very hard to play against. Very structured team. So for us to come out with a win there was. Huge for us as a line to obviously produce like that, and huge uh, for the team to get that confidence and and beat one of the, the the best teams in the league, and then come back and beat Colorado and another top five team in the league right now. So it's uh, it's good, you know. You gotta you gotta beat the best teams if you want to be considered one of the best teams. I think we we had a stretch where we were beating a lot of teams that were kind of more near the bottom of the standings. But for us to go back to back and beat LA and then Colorado, it it definitely. Uh, and it helps with the the confidence and like telling us like hey we're a top team here too like let's believe in ourselves. Gabriel Vlardi with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Gabe, uh, what's it like playing for Rick Bonus? Uh, how's it been under Bones for uh, your uh, first stint as a Jet? It's been uh, incredible so far. I, I love him. He's great. He's a very uh, he's a he's a player's coach. I know that's kind of a cliche that a lot of people use, but he's just very uh, easy to talk to. He understands like what you're going through. If, He's reached out to me several times through through text and different things. If I'm struggling, if I'm playing good, just kind of let me know what he's thinking. And and for me personally, it's something I haven't experienced, and it's been uh, it's been a, a blessing kind of for me. And I think it's really helped with with my confidence and just feeling comfortable uh, around the rink, around the facilities, and on the ice, obviously. So I'm really uh, glad he's my coach, and I hope we can keep doing good for him. Obviously, he's never won a cup that's something that he's talked to us a lot about and uh that's a long ways away but i'm, I'm glad he's my coach and want to do good by him you know um you know we've heard and it's pretty clear i mean the way things are going uh, on the ice right now and hearing from players individually but as a newer player to this team i'm interested to get your perspective on what the winnipeg jets are like a team off the ice in the dressing room uh away from the cameras and the microphones we hear a lot about how together this team is and we've heard family a lot that and you know that can be in a lot of different ways but um is this a really loose group i mean is it all business yeah. all the time i mean uh, no, no, uh, there's a, a personality of every team yeah, yeah. I don't, no i know what you mean now I, I say it's a very it's a bit of both obviously there's a certain amount of joking around and looseness that comes with 
being in a team environment and just being with your brothers on the ice and in the dressing room and hanging out and just having fun. But then there's also a certain seriousness that has to come with being a professional athlete and going out there and expecting to win every night. So I think we have a, a really good balance right now with a lot of guys that are kind of more, like you said, loose and like to joke around. And then there's a few guys that are more serious and it kind of balances each other out. It's kind of like that with every team, but uh, I think here it, uh, it is, uh, it has, I've learned real quickly as a family, like we're out there together and if somebody touches one of one of your brothers kind of thing, it's like you stick up and we all kind of stand together. And, uh, and, uh, like I said before, it's been fun so far and, uh, I've, I've enjoyed my time here and, uh, we're just, uh, looking, looking ahead we got to keep going and we want to keep winning and, um, yeah. Hey, who uh, who are the biggest characters in the dressing room? I mean, if you were uh, if you saw a bunch of guys busting their guts laughing, who's probably responsible for it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. On any given day, it could be anyone. I like Schmitty. I think he's a very funny guy. A lot of uh, good one-liners. Uh, Shife's pretty funny too with his uh, his jokes and how he goes after guys. Um, but everyone's kind of got their own different personality, and uh, it's fun to fun to see. Well, it seems to be working. Um, it, you know, you, I'm sure, went against Adam Lowry quite a bit back uh, when you remember the LA Kings when you did play the Winnipeg Jets. Um, what have you seen Adam's game? And and uh, I'm interested in how he's been as a captain, as a new captain, with you being a new member of the team. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, I'll say, like, as a, as a person, he's an incredible person. When I first got here and I was hanging out by myself, he reached out and he was – First guy to kind of show me around town. He sent me a list of all the restaurants that he thought I should go to, and he he definitely went out of his way to to make me feel welcome uh, here, being new to Winnipeg, obviously. Um, and then as a player, I think he's uh, he does like everything while out there. He plays extremely hard every night. You know what you're going to get from him, um, which is great. Obviously, consistency, and uh, he plays hard. And I think he has underrated. Uh, skill and, and puck smarts that uh, I think sometimes he doesn't even realize that he that he has. He holds on to pucks sometimes and he makes incredible plays and I think he can do that more often and, and we tell him that. And uh but yeah he's a he's a he's a character player. He plays tough, he plays hard, he's a great penalty killer for us. Um and obviously he's with that third line with him uh Appy and Nino they've been incredible all year. Um getting tough assignments, playing against other teams' top lines and playing hard and uh, obviously containing them and, and creating offense off that too. They got a lot of points too. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, Adam helping you with the transition being here to Winnipeg. I mean, we certainly know what's going well on the ice. Uh, um, how's it been off the ice? Are you fully comfortable now uh, here in the peg and as a member of the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, you know, I am. I am now. Uh, honestly, things have been great. Um, it was definitely a, a change at first getting used to it, but now that I'm kind of in my routine and my girlfriend's in her routine and we've kind of got that down. I think things have been been great and we like it. I'm from Kingston, Ontario. It's a small town, obviously, and it kind of reminds me of home a lot. So it's uh, it's nice. Uh, the weather's changing a little bit now, starting to get colder. We were expecting it sooner, but it's coming now. And uh, um, got family in town, obviously, for the holidays here. But uh, things I want to pick up have been, uh, been great so far. Oh, that's nice. So you got family coming in. You'll uh, be staying in Winnipeg for a few days while the team's off. Yeah, we'll be staying here and uh, just hanging out. Not too sure what we're going to do to fill the time yet, but we'll figure that out. Gabe, okay, I know we're all going to be watching the World Junior Hockey Championships uh, this uh, this year coming up on Boxing Day. Um, you won a gold medal for Canada at the Worlds. Um, what's it like to put that Canadian jersey on and uh, obviously, in your case, um, actually come home with a gold medal representing your country? Yeah. Yeah. Every time you play for Canada, is, uh, it's it's an honor. It's kind of a dream come true, obviously, uh, in a different sense than like obviously playing in the NHL. Um, I played world under 17s. So I, I was fortunate enough to win that. And then, like you said, I won world championships. Um, but uh, it's it's cool. You're playing for your country. You're playing against other countries. Uh, the, the best players uh, for your age group or, or for championships, best players in, in the world that are available at that time, obviously. Um, it uh, comes with a different sense of pride and a different uh, meaning to each game. But uh, it's, uh, 
it's really cool. And I think as a Canadian kid, especially, you know, you grow up watching World Juniors, everyone tunes in and it's like, oh, we're home for the holidays. Like, come on over, let's watch the Canada USA game on New Year's Eve or whatever. And it's uh, it's a big event. So for all the the kids that are playing, I mean, hopefully they just kind of have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm 24 now and you look back at, at those times and it's like you take it so serious at the time, but it's really just just have fun with it and, and, and enjoy the the atmosphere but they're they're in sweden this year where are they uh yeah yeah they're in sweden yeah so i mean obviously he's not playing in canada and for the world juniors but uh it'll still be a great environment i'm sure and everyone's gonna be rooting for them here in canada so i hope they do well and uh, i'm excited to, to watch and uh, see these kids play you mentioned about having fun Gabe. i had a couple more on the way out that are not really hockey related one is i guess adjacent because We've heard a lot of the Macarena this week as you've been scoring at home with the personalized goal songs. You mentioned it wasn't one of your buddies that gave you the idea back at home. You certainly got the assignment. It is a song that everyone knows, that everyone's into. How did that conversation go and how did he drop? You got to have the Macarena and uh, obviously <laughs> fans are really enjoying it right now. Yeah, no, I'm glad everyone's uh, enjoying it. It was something uh, I kind of talked with a bunch of my friends about and... Uh... Like you said, it was just like, what's a song that like everyone really knows? And, you know, there's a dance to it. I want to get people up and on their feet when 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 I score. I want people to have fun. So uh, we we were talking and brainstorming for a few days. And then we thought of the, the Macarena because, uh, like you said, it's a song everyone knows. And there's a dance to it. And it's fun. It's catchy. So, uh, yeah, glad it's uh I'm glad it's playing finally. It took a little longer than than I thought it would uh, to get playing here, and uh, I'm glad the fans are, are enjoying it. And I hope uh, hope we can hear it a bunch more times, and the team keeps winning. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And they'll have it queued up tomorrow night against the Boston Bruins. Up, uh, Gabe. Well, you mentioned you know you're going to have family in holidays. It's a very strange Christmas schedule because we've got NFL games on Christmas Day and on Christmas Eve. Yeah. What's the fantasy football situation? Are you still alive in the Jets league? How, how are things going this year with something that will certainly be on many of our minds the next few days? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I said, I'm, I'm in the semifinals here. I got a big matchup against uh, Neil and, and Vladdy. I'm with Stan. Um, we got a good team. I got some big decisions to make coming up with, uh, with my flex position. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I should go with the chain. On the Dolphins there, I got Scary Terry, and then uh, I also got Jalen Warren. So I got to play one of them. I don't know who I'm going to play, but uh, it is kind of weird that they play on Christmas Eve and Christmas. I feel bad for the NFL guys. That kind of sucks. I mean, you want to be with family and, and hanging out, but uh, it's good for us at least. You know, we get to sit, sit at home and have football on, so it'll be cool. Um, but yeah, a big fantasy matchup for me this week. Well, and, and I mean, man, that game on Christmas night, Ravens and Niners, the top two teams in the two the conferences oh, yeah. going at it. That's the night game. And I mean, everyone, if you're still in the playoffs, is going to have guys from the Niners or Ravens. So there there will be certainly some people that will be somewhat occupied or checking their phones yeah. at some Christmas uh, at some Christmas dinners. Um, all in all, though, congratulations on getting to this point. We, we're in the same boat. we got to move on to the finals, survive survive this exactly, week and yeah. be making some game time decisions. And you know what, just to end off, Niners and Ravens, a kind of nice preview of tomorrow night against the Boston Bruins. Um, you guys have been playing as well as anybody in the National Hockey League since the beginning of November. We know what Boston's been. Uh, what do you make of one more chance to kind of measure yourselves up against one of the best teams in the league heading into the Christmas break tomorrow night at home? Yeah, you said it's another chance for us to see where we're at. This is uh, they're the best, they're the top team in the East right now, no? Yeah, are they the best? Uh, they're right there, them and the Rangers. Yeah, so it's uh, another opportunity for us to go out and play hard and hopefully uh, get another win. Um, every point matters right now. You look at our division, uh, the other teams keep winning too. Dallas is winning, Colorado keeps winning. Even Nashville, they've been uh, really good uh, as of late too. So we need to keep winning too and uh, it should be uh, – a good, uh, good game tomorrow and good measuring stick for us. Hopefully we uh, come out ready to play. Gabe, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, we're loving here in the Macarena. It's been a lot of fun seeing what you and your line and the team is doing right now. Good luck tomorrow against the Boston Bruins. Have a wonderful holiday with your family. Continued success into the new year with the Winnipeg Jets.
Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You have a great holiday with your family as well. Eh?